Hello and welcome to another Why It Matters episode of The Living Philosophy. For those of you who are new to the series, these Why It Matters videos are my reactions to the videos on the channel, why I chose the topics and why I find them important in the grander context of the channel. When I'm making the main videos, I try to keep myself out of it as much as possible, but there are some out there who are curious to hear my points of views and so I've been playing around with this format as a way of kind of doing both. Although actually this may be the last Why It Matters video that I put on YouTube. I'm thinking I'll still make them, but I'm not sure that I'm going to keep putting them on YouTube. So more on that later in the episode. But for now, let's talk about Foucault and about power. So this video is critical for me for a number of reasons. Obviously, it's a continuation of the exploration of French postmodern philosophy, but it's also a continuation of the theme of countering the polarization in society. The more I study the continental tradition, the more the scapegoating of the likes of Foucault and Derrida as destroyers of the West grates on me. So much hate in the culture and what I find really interesting about it is the the, the strain of hypocrisy that's running through it. The progressive left is all about perspective taking. It's a movement built around empathy and validating the experience of different individuals. And yet a major part of that movement, and maybe this is just the dynamics of social media algorithms selecting for outrage, but a large part of that movement seems to be hatred for the outgroup that isn't as diligent in that perspective taking. On the other hand, you have Jordan Peterson. His philosophy is deeply grounded in Jung, and Peterson talks again and again about the Jungian shadow. In his lectures, Peterson talks a lot about the gulags and about the Nazis. A lot of his work is a caution about the dangers of being self-righteous and dismissive about these historical events, because in all likelihood, if we found ourselves in these situations, we'd probably find ourselves being among the bad guys. It's very easy for us to forget that 43% of Germans voted for Hitler in 1933. It might be easy to make Hitler into this icon of evil, but when you think of the millions of Germans that voted for him, it becomes more difficult. Not simply a picture of evil that can be easily dismissed. Despite this caution about the banality of evil and an emphasis on Jung's philosophy of the shadow, a lot of Peterson's fan base pour buckets of hatred on anything progressive. If you look at the Jordan Peterson subreddit, it's not a place for self-improvement. It's not a place for discussions about literature, philosophy and psychology. It's a trench in the so-called culture wars. There's something really off-putting about this sort of mixed messaging. The combination of self-righteousness and hypocrisy really grates with me. And so something that I've been really curious to do is to take the other perspective. Something that I want to do with the channel is to steer between the polarities. I want it to be an exercise in perspective taking. I want to get into the perspectives of these thinkers that are often dismissed with a scapegoating soundbite by those who are not part of the movement. For me, it's an exercise in undermining polarization, and I hope that by doing this exploration in public, it might have some kind of positive effect on the world. But obviously this is very far from being a dutiful or onerous task. I love thinkers with big ideas, and studying Foucault, Heidegger and Baudrillard has brought so many rich new ideas into my intellectual landscape. There's this great quote from Steve Jobs about creativity just being about connecting things. It's about having enough dots to connect and having a diverse experience. I feel like the rewards of going beyond polarities is that you end up making connections that other people haven't made. That's why I got so excited at the end of this episode when talking about Jung and Foucault. There's two thinkers that are extremely well known and yet it's rare to come across somebody that loves both of them. They tend to be popular in different circles. And so what I love about this random path that I'm taking by dancing through the lines of polarization is that I'm getting access to a diversity of inputs that don't normally go together, which is quite exciting from the perspective of connecting dots that haven't been previously connected. A few months back when I was just beginning to explore the French postmodernists, I made a video about the 1977 petition signed by Foucault, Sartre, Deleuze and de Beauvoir, among many others, to abolish the age of consent in France. That video was my attempt at understanding their perspective and how they arrived at defending something that seems entirely indefensible today. And so I thought I'd try and make a good faith investigation and see if I could figure it out. I made some headway, but obviously not an awful lot. Um, Since publishing the Foucault video, that video has now gotten a major spike and there have been hundreds of new comments on it. And in comparison to the Foucault video, it's 
chalk and cheese. Judging by the comments, the video about the petition has only served to reinforce the polarization, which is kind of interesting. Um, I'm still trying to figure out exactly what that means, but it's, yeah, it's just interesting to see how even as I feel like I'm making progress in overcoming that polarization or in bridging these perspectives together, there's a whole separate thing that's going on over there and is continuing and I'm somehow a part of that now as well. So that's that's been quite interesting as a, as a contrast. There's just such a contrast between that video and the, the Foucault video or the other videos in terms of the comments are generally positive, there's curious, there's there's people just yeah, I don't know. It's it's not it's not like hate filled or it's not generally shutting down conversations. It's generally an opening up conversation, a curiosity and adding in new ideas. I feel like the core followership of the living philosophy is really in contrast to that video because it seems to be more people that are looking to get beyond the polarities. And the, a lot of people have said to me, like the quality of comments on the channel is very strange for YouTube. And that's something that I'm really proud of and something that I'm really grateful to be a part of. And it just seems like it's a group of people that are looking for the bigger picture and that are genuinely curious to see what's going on beyond the echo chamber narratives that you hear in the culture. I've been away the last couple of weeks hiking a bit of the Camino in Northern Spain. And I've been thinking about this a lot and I think it's finally time to give Discord a go and I feel like the the capacity for interaction is, is a bit too limited in the comments on YouTube and Patreon and despite uh, a lot of encouragement from people especially Lenny Penny over the past year I've kind of held off on on starting the Discord well I started the Discord but in terms of like getting it set up and getting it out there kind of been a bit reticent about it and I think it's just yeah not being prepared and kind of wanted to do research or kind of want to understand it more but yeah I'm not any more prepared now, but it just seems like Discord is a place with a lot of potential for like community interaction. So despite my not really um, being fully sure about how it works and how, how to get that going, I just thought, hell, we'll just give it a go and see what happens. And I'm sure people will come along who know Discord much better than me and who can kind of like get the ball rolling. So yeah, I just thought it'd be cool to have a living philosophy community for people who want to interact with the ideas around the living philosophy. Also, as I mentioned at the start of the video, I think this is going to be the last Why It Matters video that I'm going to post on YouTube. I'm still going to make the videos, but I think I'm just going to post them publicly on Patreon from now on. Still be free for everyone to watch, but I'm just thinking they might be for a more core audience. And yeah, I just, I just feel a bit like it's just a bit of a weird format having a video, why it matters, video, why it matters. So yeah, yeah, I don't know. So I'm just thinking maybe if I just put it up on Patreon, it's there, it's free for everyone. I'll make an announcement about it on the community tab whenever there's one out or on Discord. And yeah, I, I was also thinking I could maybe set up uh, a newsletter so people want to be notified since I guess only patrons will get email notifications when I post it. But yeah, I'm just thinking it might be a good way to do that. Just, yeah, I don't know. Um, it's something I, I'm still just trying to figure that out. Um, I still, still trying to figure out the YouTube channel in general, but yeah, when I was first making these videos or when I was first planning on making them, I kind of thought I'd make a separate channel, but then I just ended up putting them on this and yeah, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on it because yeah, I, like, um, I, I'm not set in it, but I just kind of feel like, yeah, okay, if this is for a core audience, then we'll put it over there on Patreon, but yeah, would love to hear your feedback on it. Um. Yeah, of course, in all this bigger picture discussion, I haven't actually talked about the content of the video and why it matters to me. And that's a bit of an oversight because it's such a juicy topic. And ever since studying Foucault's work on power, I found myself tinkering around with the idea more and more. I've actually been thinking a lot about one of my favourite movies, Cloud Atlas, because despite what people say about Foucault, he doesn't actually reduce every social interaction to power relations. As we talked about in the video, saying that gravity is everywhere is different to saying that everything is gravity. Social interactions all contain power, but power is not the only thing they contain. So I've been trying to think about what else they contain. And one thing that I've come up with is obviously love. And that's where Cloud Atlas came to my mind because it's another theatrical spectacle by the Wachowskis that explores the philosophical question of love versus power, which is the dominant force in human life. And I love that the movie presents it as a choice. 
We can choose a power-centered worldview and that causes us to see the world in a certain way and to be incapable of seeing it the other way. On the other hand, there is a love-centered worldview and what's interesting is that each is the shadow of the other. Some people see the world in terms of love, which makes them blind to power, and some people see it the other way. And then you get interesting cases like in-cell psychology, where there seems to have been a flip from love psychology to power psychology. Or you see in the story of people like Bill Gates or people having midlife crisis, the story of people at least in part flipping from power psychologies into love psychologies. I guess aside from that, the the real thing that's important about this video for me and why it matters to me has been the, the context and how it fits into the landscape of the channel in general and of the culture in general. And so it's more about the context of it rather than the content. What's important with this video is that Foucault has been misunderstood. He's been demonized and his philosophy warped into an unrecognizable form. And yet, if anyone was to actually look into his philosophy, they would see something powerful and empowering. It's a wonderful philosophy that dovetails with the work of Jung and Peterson in interesting ways that, as I mentioned in the episode, we'll be exploring in more depth in future episodes on the channel. For now, that's everything for this episode of The Living Philosophy. I'd like to thank Shane, Chris Anteater, and all the other patrons for their support. It's been really humbling and I'm so grateful to see so many people coming through to Patreon and supporting the channel if you'd like to support the channel you can head over to patreon where you can get access to bonus weekly mini episodes maybe multiple weekly episodes if we end up doing the the why it matters over there you can also get your name in the credits like these wonderful people and much much more if you have any thoughts insights or feedback i'd love to hear from you down in the comments otherwise i shall see you next time thank you for watching